Hey students, so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about what are assets in accounting. Now, make sure to watch the very end of this video because there's gonna be one type of asset that's honestly pretty crazy. I'll reveal it toward the end. But in reality, honestly, assets are just what a business owns, and that's it. It's just what they own. What do they have in their possession that they actually have economic benefit from? So let's say that you own a toy car company, right? You sell toy cars. So toy cars, boom, boom, think about it. You own that business, so what do you have? You have inventory, you have these cars that you wanna sell, right? You derive economic benefit from those toy cars because you sell them and customers give you cash. It's that simple. So that inventory is considered an asset to you because you can actually derive some sort of benefit from it. Now, to explain this further, let's jump in to my computer. Okay, so assets, assets in accounting. Now, the first thing we need to talk about here is the accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. And this is the most important part here. Assets equals liabilities and equity. And the key is here. It must equal. And so we call this balancing. And so the next thing we should discuss then is that this, these three things, right? This is called the fundamental accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. We won't talk too much about liabilities and equity in this video, but assets, assets is what we're talking about here. And this goes on your balance sheet. So excuse the, <laughs> the terrible drawing here, but they go right up here. So they're the first thing that goes on this balance sheet. Okay. And so there's a lot of stuff under assets. And then down here, you're going to have your liabilities. And then below that, you'll have your stockholders equity. But this is called a balance sheet. And that's an important part of knowing what assets are because assets must equal liabilities plus equity. Now, with assets, though, there's lots of different categories that go in this section. Lots of different categories. Now, what are those categories? Let's take a look. Now, there are many types of assets. In accounting, they categorize them. So first you have current. Now, what is current? Well, think about current as an asset that you will convert into cash within one year. Once again, that's an asset that you will convert into cash within one year. That's a current asset. Now, let's talk about another type of asset called investments. So investments, are stuff like trading securities or what they call notes receivable, right? You're waiting to receive money from someone you lent. Like banks, basically, if they lend out money to you, that's a note receivable on there. And they lend money out to you and they expect you to pay them back plus interest. That's another type of asset called investment. Now, another type of asset is called non-current or property, plant, and equipment. What's property, plant, and equipment? Well, think about property, plant, and equipment is usually a building or let's say a piece of land or maybe some equipment, right? It's these what they call fixed assets, these assets that companies hold on to for multiple years, definitely more than one year because they're going to derive economic benefit from them for a long period of time. Now, those assets, they what they call depreciate, except for land. So over time, as you use a building, as you use equipment, it will slowly decline in value as the more you use it. Another really weird asset that I wanna go ahead and tell you about is something called an intangible asset, something that you can't physically hold. It's stuff like patents and copyrights and trademarks. They're assets to a company, but you, they're not physical. You can't hold them. So now that you know the four different types of assets, we got current, investments, property, plants, and equipment, and intangible assets. So next, let's jump into my computer. We're gonna go through a lot of different examples of each category. Okay, so different categories of assets. As I was talking about, we have current. Now, current assets, what are they? Well, like I was saying, it's assets that can be converted into cash within one year. So if it can be converted into cash within one year, cash is definitely here. Another one that's very popular is accounts receivable. 
and I'll put that right here underneath. So accounts receivable. Now, what is that? Well, think about it from a business perspective, right? Oh, drop my pen. Let's say you sell toy cars, right? And you sell toy cars to another uh, customer or company, but that company doesn't pay you in cash right away. They, pay, they, they will pay you later. And that's called accounts receivable. You're waiting on or you're waiting to receive that cash, but it's still an asset. Another popular uh, current asset is inventory. So we talked a little bit about that as well. If you have toy cars that you're selling, that's going to go in your inventory. Another one is what we call prepaid accounts. Prepaid means you prepay, right? You pay up front. So they think about like paying for insurance up front for a full year, or paying for um, rent up front for a full year. That's prepaid. You prepay up front, and as time goes on, it slowly depletes that account. Kind of like a prepaid credit card. Think about that. You go and you get a prepaid credit card, you fill it up, and as you use it, it slowly depletes. And that's an asset to you. Uh, let's see, another one here for current. Well, uh, a good one for current would be something like, let's see, so we went through prepaid, inventory, accounts receivable, cash. Those are some of the big ones there, honestly, for current assets. We're not going to go through all of them, but those are some of the big current ones. So let's go and jump over to investments. What does this entail? Well, this is stuff that you're holding, right, for investment. For example, land. But it must be what they call held for investment. So that is a specific type of land. If you're just holding it for investment, that's um, that's considered part of the investment of the of the balance sheet or the asset section. Now another one here, investment would be something called notes receivable. So I talked about that earlier, but basically it's like if you lend money out to someone and you expect them to pay it back over many years. That's called a notes receivable, and you're waiting on that cash over um, more than one year at least. Uh, another one would be something like a, um, a security, right? That's like a financial instrument, something you're going to hold on to for more than one year. Investments usually go for more than one year. Now let's talk about PP&E. So property, plant, and equipment. That's what it stands for, and it's kind of what it sounds like. It's like fixed assets. It's like this tractor over here, right? That would be an example of property, plants, and equipment. It's usually a, a piece of asset that you own that you're going to own for a long time, for more than one year, and you're going to derive an economic benefit from it from year to year. So a popular one would be equipment. Sorry if this is getting kind of uh, scrunched up here. So equipment would be one, land, uh, another one would be a building, maybe you own a computer. These are basically assets that you're going to hold for more than one year. Now another one is something called accumulated depreciation. I'm going to put AD and that right there just directly reduces your equipment account or your building account as that building um, it has a certain lifespan to it and each year it's going to depreciate is what they call it. Now I have a lot of videos on depreciation so make sure you check the channel for those videos but it just basically loses value over time as you use it. That's one way to look at it. And lastly we have this thing called intangible assets. Assets that you can't physically hold. You can't hold them. They're, they're just not physical and like a good one would be something called a patent or something called a trademark or a copyright. So these are things that companies have, they hold them, but again, they're assets on the balance sheet, but they're not physical. You can't actually hold them, but they still hold a lot of value for that company, if that makes sense. So those are the four main categories of assets on the balance sheet. Okay, so now that you know all the different types of categories of assets, let's go ahead and practice a problem where we'll put it all together. Let's do it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and practice a problem. So what we're gonna do here is I listed out all the different types of assets. Now, not all of them, but most of them, just different types. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna categorize them, either current, 
investment, property, plants, and equipment, or intangible asset. All right. So the first one, hopefully you guys get this one, cash. What is that? Well, cash is current. I'll put C for current. Accounts receivable, well, we know that we're gonna receive this usually within one year, so we can convert it into cash within one year. If you remember, converting it into cash is considered current within one year. Now equipment, well, remember P, P, and E, it's actually in the name, so property, plants, and equipment. P, P, E. Now a patent, well, a patent is something that you can't physically hold right? So if you can't physically hold it, it's considered intangible. So I'll put an I. Prepaid insurance. Well, anytime you see this word prepaid, I'd say 99% of the time, it's going to be current. Anytime you see prepaid, it's going to be current. Because usually that, that account depletes, like prepaid insurance, it usually depletes within one year, and you're going to have to re-up it. Trading securities. Well, trading securities usually, if you're trading them, they usually uh, expire or not, not expire really, but you can go ahead and uh, cash them in usually within one year. And so we consider trading securities current. Inventory, same thing, right? You hold inventory like that toy car example, you're going to go ahead and sell that inventory. Usually you flip it within one year. And so that's why inventory is considered current. Now, accumulated depreciation, if you remember, that's going to be attached to your property, plant, and equipment. It shows how long or how much value is declined or how you can allocate that expense of the equipment over time. And that's called depreciation. It accumulates or it grows. So that's going to be property, plant, and equipment. Goodwill. Well, that's a form of actually an intangible asset intangible asset you can't hold goodwill goodwill really on a strict definition of it is usually when a company acquires another company for less than what it's worth and that difference is called goodwill now trademarks that's also an intangible asset you can't hold a trademark right it's not physical so it's intangible notes receivable long term well since it's a long term note receivable you lent out some money and you're waiting to get it back that is considered an investment and i'll put investment for that land well land is also considered property plants and equipment you hold on to land for many years and you use it prepaid well here prepaid rent we have another prepaid and remember about the rule on prepaid it's going to be current now how about stock well here's a trick question Stock is not actually an asset. Stock is considered equity, so we're actually just going to mark it out for this example. It is not an asset. And that is a practice problem there. We went through all the different types or most of the different types of assets and we categorized them. And that is how assets work. So what I want you to do for me right now is comment below and tell me what asset do you want more of in your life? I imagine you're going to say cash. But tell me, what type of asset would you like more of? It could be a computer or a new car or cash. Comment below, let me know. And as always, please like and subscribe, all right? That's really important for me to grow this channel. I wanna keep making more videos to help you learn accounting. Until next time, thanks for watching.